What's up guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, and today we finally get a look at the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus. I'm gonna compare them in this video to see what exactly you might wanna pick up. So the 7 and 7 Plus dimensionally are identical to the 6S and 6S Plus, but we get a tweak design and a host of new features from waterproofing for the first time, all new cameras on the front and back, a brighter display with a wider color gamut, in addition to stereo speakers, which is great to finally have on an iPhone. We also get better battery life, thanks partly to the new A10 CPU, which is more powerful, but more efficient as well. They've also made some other controversial changes, such as eliminating the headphone jack and the home button is no longer a physical button. Instead, it vibrates when you press it. We also get a new design which comes with two brand new colors, black and jet black. We're gonna take a look at both of them in this video. Now, once again, the iPhone is available in three capacities, but this time they've doubled them for the same price as they were last year. 32, 120 gigs, and for the first time, 256 gigs. Now, if you want the jet black model, you'll have to spring for 120 gigs or better in order to get it. So getting to the unboxing, Apple has redesigned the packaging for this generation. So we do have the colors front and center on each cover. But of course, if you get the jet black version, you're gonna get a very distinctive black box to go with it. So it's a bit different than the rest of them. So of course, I have one of each color to show off so we can take a look at them side by side. So let's get started with the iPhone 7. Now the plastic surrounding the packaging is now much easier to take off. They actually give you a tab to pull it off. So previously you actually had to cut the plastic off so they've made this a little simpler. So next up we can go ahead and lift up the lid and the first thing you see here won't be the phone, it's actually the paperwork. So this is a little packet that pulls up and once you get that out of the way you can see the phone. Inside we'll find some paperwork including a quick start guide which is a bit different than we've seen in previous generations so it explains some of the features here. We also have the regulatory and warranty information in addition to to Apple stickers, which are now on this clear plastic sheet. And unfortunately, all these stickers are still white, so they're not color matched to the phone. So getting to the phone itself, it does have a little plastic tab along the bottom, so we can use this to pull it out of the box. So it's wrapped in plastic to keep it nice and protected, and we can go ahead and peel this off. And of course, that's the last time this phone is gonna be this clean looking, especially with these black colors. Now next up, let's get to the accessories, which have been redesigned for this generation of iPhone. First up, we have something that hasn't changed, and that is the five watt power adapter, which comes with every iPhone. 7. Next up, we have the new lightning connected ear pods. So we don't get the wireless AirPods in the iPhone 7. That's a separate accessory that you have to purchase, but you do get wired headphones that connect directly to the lightning connector. Also included here is the adapter for traditional analog headphones. Uh, so you do get that with every iPhone 7 purchase. So at least you have an adapter in order to use your old headphones. And lastly, at the bottom of the box, we get our lightning cable. So getting to the unboxing of the iPhone 7 Plus, obviously identical to the iPhone 7, just scaled up to size. So all I have to do is remove that plastic sleeve, pop open the lid, and inside, first thing you'll see is the paperwork. Setting that aside, we'll find the phone just below it, wrapped in plastic, which comes off very easily. And of course, I have the gold version in this case, as well as the silver version. And in terms of the accessories, they're also identical. They're just more widely spaced for the bigger box. So when it comes to setup, it's pretty familiar for any iPhone. There's a few differences here, uh, but for the most part, it's the same as the iPhone 6S. So we can go ahead and set up our Touch ID sensor, Apple Pay, and Siri voice recognition, which can be done wirelessly as you could with the iPhone 6S. But new here is the new home button. So you get an explanation of how the home button works and you can actually customize the intensity of the taptic click that replicates the home button press. So you can go with very light, medium, or high intensity. Now personally, I prefer the medium because the higher intensity one feels a little like the screen is clicking at the bottom, while the medium intensity feels just about right. In terms of the design, Apple describes this as refined, and I think that's a good way of putting it. It looks a lot like the previous generation, has the same dimensions, but does have some welcome tweaks here. And one of them is the antenna design. So they've been able to integrate the antennas into the casing of the phone, which means we have smaller antenna stripes along the top and bottom. I think this is a big improvement visually. Now, if you get one of the dark black colors, you can see that the lines are virtually invisible. So you have a very minimal look, much more stealthy than before with space gray. And of course, if you get the other colors, they're whiter, so they contrast more sharply. The other change here is the camera design is now much more integrated into the body of the chassis. So it looks a little stronger and I think looks a lot better. At the bottom edge, of course, things have changed quite a bit here. So the headphone jack is removed and instead we have this very symmetrical design. So it looks like we have stereo speakers, but in reality, we have one loudspeaker and microphone 
Bones on the other sides. Apple just wants that symmetrical design so it looks more attractive. But once again, they pay a lot of attention to detail right down to the speaker grills matching the color of the phone. So when it comes to the other buttons, they're in the same place as they were before. On the right side, we'll find our thumb reachable power button, and on the left side, we'll find our volume controls up and down. Now they did make a slight tweak to the iPhone 7 volume key, so gone is that recession from the iPhone 6s. Now it's a much simpler look. Also found on the right side is our nano SIM tray, and there's a difference here because we have a water resistant design. The SIM tray also has a gasket built into it, so that's a new feature if you look very closely. Now although you can't tell by looking at it, the home buttons have also been redesigned and they're solid state this time, so there is no physical click. But instead of a mechanical click, the Taptic Engine replicates a click at the bottom of the phone. It feels exactly like a click. It doesn't feel like a vibration, but it's not quite as localized as I was expecting it to. It actually feels like the bottom of the phone is clicking, not just the button itself. We also get stereo speakers for the first time on an iPhone 7. So we have one loudspeaker at the bottom and the earpiece now acts as a loudspeaker as well. So that delivers twice the volume of the previous iPhone 6s and 6s Plus. This also gives us a much wider dynamic range and the phone is smart enough to know whether you're holding it in portrait or landscape orientation and reorientates the stereo speakers for optimal audio quality. So let's go ahead and take a listen to what it sounds like compared to the iPhone 6s. About a year ago, Apple launched a product called the iPhone Lightning Dock, and when the iPhone 6S came out, they launched them in aluminum versions with colors that match the iPhones. Well, with the iPhone 7, they've had to add a new color, and that is black. So this is designed to accompany the new black color, along with a new jet black color that's coming with the iPhone 7. Another big deal here is that this is the first iPhone to get an IP67 certification, which means it's dust and water resistant. In terms of water resistance, this means you can submerge the phone in one one meter of water for up to 30 minutes, so don't take it swimming, but this will do a much better job protecting your phone in those accidents or if you're out in the rain. So when it comes to the displays, once again, they're the same size and resolution as the 6S and 6S Plus. So we have a 4.7 inch and a 5.5 inch screen. The 4.7 inch comes in a resolution at 750 by 1334, good for 326 PPI, while the 7 Plus has a full 1080p display, good for 401 pixels per inch. So that's definitely the sharper display here. Both of them are once again LCD IPS panels with dual domain pixels, which delivers fantastic off-axis viewing, which also gives us very deep and dark contrast with bright, vivid colors. Now, speaking of brightness, both displays are 25% brighter than the previous model. The display is also pick up the same Cinema P3 spec of some of their Mac models, which means we have a much wider color gamut available for this phone. Now, this is great because it can also display the wider color gamut of the new camera system. Now, comparing the iPhone 7 to the 6S displays side by side, the thing that jumps out right away to me is that the 7 looks a lot warmer than the 6S. The 6S has a much cooler color temperature, but the iPhone 7 definitely has a wider color gamut, so it looks a lot more vibrant than the iPhone 6S. But in terms of brightness, at first glance, I don't really see the difference here, but there's definitely a big difference in color. We also get an all-new 7-megapixel FaceTime HD camera, which has an f2.2 aperture. It can finally record in 1080p HD video. Now, if you remember from the previous generation, that was a five megapixel sensor that could only record in 720p video. So this is a welcome improvement. This also has other features like auto image stabilization, as well as deep trench isolation for great low light performance. That also combines with the Retina HD flash to illuminate your shots. So when it comes to the cameras, obviously there's a difference between the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus, but they all have the same main camera, a 12 megapixel sensor, which is all new with optical image stabilization. This also has a much wider f1.8 aperture jumping from the 2.2 aperture from the previous model. We also get larger pixels on those sensors for better low light sensitivity. But when it comes to the iPhone 7 Plus, it gets a second 12 megapixel sensor, but this time with an f2.8 aperture. So this is used for telephoto images. So this allows you to zoom in optically on images and we're going to take a look at that in the software. Now, I do think it's worth noting that although we have software stabilization on this lens, it does not have optical image stabilization like the main wide angle lens. Also next to the camera is one of the microphones in addition to our new LED flash. So this is a quad LED flash with dual tone and this is 50% brighter and shoots 50% farther. Now, in terms of using optical zoom on the iPhone 7 Plus, it's actually very simple. It's built into the camera app. So basically you get this little controller that allows you to quickly jump between 1X and 2X optical zoom. Alternatively, you can also tap and hold and then swipe across in order to zoom in and out. This also includes software zoom or digital cropping. So basically you can zoom in and out all the way up to 10x when you're taking the photograph. You can also do this in video, but you're limited to 6x instead of 10. 
In terms of photo quality, both cameras are basically identical until you're using the optical zoom on the 7 Plus. So they're delivering very similar results with optical image stabilization. Now in terms of bright daylight conditions, again, we're using a 12 megapixel sensor, so we're not gonna see increased sharpness, but we're definitely seeing increased color and better exposure because we have a wider aperture with an f1.8 lens, which means we're getting a lot more light into the camera and the pixels on the sensors themselves are larger, which means there's better sensitivity. So you're seeing a lot crisper detail, even if we're not seeing higher resolution. The other great detail about this camera is that we have a shallow depth of field thanks to the f1.8 aperture. So that means you can get those blurred background shots with a focus on your subject. And because we have those focus pixels built into the sensor, that means the camera is able to focus very quickly and smoothly on your shot without having to spend too much time figuring out which point you want to focus on. We also have 4K video recording, but this is something you have to turn on under settings. You can't do it from within the app, which is kind of strange. So you have to go to settings, photos, and camera and turn on 4K video recording. So with 4K video recording with optical and software stabilization, handheld video looks extremely smooth. And of course we benefit from the wider aperture that lets more light in, the better sensor, and the wider color gamut. So 4K video definitely looks a lot better on this phone than it did with the previous generation. And the other great thing here is that we can quickly switch between the wide angle and telephoto lens while recording video. You can even use the software zoom to smoothly zoom in and out on your shot. Now this camera is particularly well suited to low light conditions. So in extreme low light conditions, you definitely see brighter shots, especially if you compare this to the iPhone 6S Plus. So it's not dramatic, but you can see that it is brighter with better detail. So it's not as murky or muddy as the 6S Plus was, but it's got about the same amount of processing. So it can be a little soft, but again, you're seeing a little more detail. Generally speaking, it's a better camera for low light, but it's not dramatically different. Now when it comes to using the brighter LED flash, it doesn't necessarily make the shot brighter, but it definitely gives you much more detail. Previously, the camera had to expose the shot longer with the weaker flash, so you can see a lot more noise. In this case, the iPhone 7 seems to do a better job with the exposure level. The iPhone 7 is also launching with a new A10 Fusion processor, which is a quad-core 64-bit processor. Now, they're calling this Fusion because it combines two high-powered cores with two low-powered high-efficiency cores. So those high-efficiency cores use one-fifth of power and are designed to power low-end tasks so you don't waste too much power, and that improves battery life. While we have these two other cores, which are high performance cores, which deliver 40% better performance than the A9 chip. We also get a new six core GPU, which is 50% faster, also using two thirds of the power of the A9. Now, as always, there is a slight speed difference between the seven and seven plus because the seven plus clocks the CPU a bit higher. But there's also another big difference and that is RAM. So there are two gigs of RAM on the seven, three gigs of RAM on the seven plus. So you get a lot more room to work with on the seven plus over the seven. Regardless, if you take a look at our Geek Command scores and compare them to the previous generation, you can see a huge gain here. So this makes a very powerful phone even more powerful. So when it comes to battery life, in addition to more efficient processors, we also have larger batteries built into both devices. So Apple estimates that most users should see one to two hours of additional battery life over the 6S. iPhone 7 does add a few features to iOS 10 that's not available on the iPhone 6S. So for example, if you wanna adjust the intensity of the vibration or click of the home button, there is a section for that under settings and under general, and you'll see the home button. And this basically allows you to pick a different intensity if you want. So if you don't set this up correctly, when you set up the phone, at least it's there under settings. Also unique to the iPhone 7 is a section under sound and haptics. So that's just sounds on the iPhone 6S. But if you go to the bottom of that list, you'll see system haptics. And that's because we get haptic feedback in some areas of the system on the iPhone 7 versus the iPhone 6S. So for example, when you toggle this switch on and off, you actually get a taptic feedback as you do so. Now, as always, the iPhone 7 Plus once again has a unique software experience compared to the standard iPhone 7. And that's because we have landscape view for many apps. That actually includes the home screen. So that's able to take better advantage of this larger, more higher resolution display. These phones are also launching with iOS 10, and I did a very extensive look at iOS 10 in a previous video, which I'll leave linked in the description below if you wanna check that out. So when it comes to these new black colors, they're much darker than the space gray that they're replacing. They're much more opaque. So it's gonna be interesting to see how they age over time, but the matte black seems to be quite durable. Now the big standout here is jet black. So jet black has this near perfect gloss finish. It actually looks like one piece of glass. It's very reflective and it's also prone to scratches. In fact, Apple warns that this is more prone to scratches. So you may want to put a case on this unless you want the weathered look, but when it's brand new, it looks like one piece of glass. In fact, it seamlessly bonds to the glass on the front for this really unique design. So it definitely stands out and makes the phone look like something completely different than you've seen up to this point. 
The only problem with these dark black colors is that they show a lot of fingerprints, certainly much more than space gray. So you may want to put a case on these unless you want to spend a lot of time cleaning them. So ultimately, in the end, the iPhone 7 really is a very polished product. It finally adds many of the features I think it's been lacking for a long time, such as waterproofing in particular. We also get fantastic cameras on both models, high-end processing power that makes the system extremely smooth and powerful, and excellent battery life that gets even better with this generation. Of course, this may not be perfect for everybody because it lacks a headphone jack, and some people want a sharper display than the one offered on the iPhone, especially the 4.7-inch iPhone 7, which definitely isn't as sharp as most flagship smartphones priced at this level. But in the end, I think this is a significant upgrade from the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus, and it's definitely worth considering as a replacement. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this look at the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus. I do have the Apple Watches and some of the iPhone 7 accessories coming up, so stay tuned for that. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up to let me know, and I'll see you again in the next one.